Thank you very much. I want to come at this in a slightly different way because the mining industry, I quite, I think quite frankly, has been behind in a lot of ways. And I want to tell you a little story to start with because I'm interested in change. My responsibility within the mining industry is to lead an organization that is in fact in place as a change agent to change the performance of mining companies across the world. So we're interested in that concept. And I want to come at this with a little story to start with. And that is to say that for the last three years, I have coached my daughter's basketball team in high school. And when you do that, what you realize is that although you can have a tremendously potent knowledge of the theory of basketball, what's most important is you work with your girls so that they take the next step that they need to take to make them better, to introduce change. That's the key. You can have an understanding of the theory of how the professionals play, but you've got to work with your people at a level that brings them the next step of improvement in a way that works for them. Now let me talk about resource efficiency and bring that to that, believe it or not. Efficiency is, a, is a, an old engineering concept. Many, many years ago, it was introduced as a ratio between the inputs and manufacturing processes, or rather the outputs to the inputs. So fewer, the idea being that more outputs, fewer inputs. Economists came along and they said, well, it's really more or less outputs for the amount of money you spend because you can mediate the process with dollars, whether it's labor or goods, uh, you get a better ratio that way. About 30 years ago, a very different concept was introduced, and in fact, it was Amory Lovins who introduced that concept. And that, is, uh, that was to say that this issue of efficiency, it's not to do with outputs. It's got to do with the services that things provide for you. And if you are very smart, you can realize that if you match the resource requirement to the services that are provided, it introduces a whole different concept of efficiency. And Amory, when you introduced those, those ideas now 25 years ago, it was a remarkable step, step forward because there was a profoundly needed technical reason for it. Now, last week I was in Johannesburg and I was meeting with a number of mining companies and one of them had just finished a very, very comprehensive study looking at the business case for building a climate change strategy for their company which would see them reduce emissions, reduce energy use, reduce water use, et cetera, et cetera. What they did for themselves is prove what was proposed by Emory Lovins and his colleagues 30 years ago in terms of finding the services that are required and using the minimum amount of inputs to achieve the services that they need to be successful in their business. And I think you're going to hear some other wonderful stories of success on that, that score from others on our panel here. The ideas of sustainability introduce, in my view, a new dimension to this. Because, in fact, it's not simply the services that we're trying to achieve. It is, in fact, a concept of well-being, and not just of people, but of the environment, which is our home. It's not simply a desire to get better services for less input. It's a desire, in fact, for people and the environment both to be better off with less disruption to doing that. Now, we're going to have very efficient cars soon in the world, but the amount of land that we're dedicating to car infrastructure is destroying our capacity to grow food. So there's a different kind of dimension that we need to think about here that the sustainability issue raises. Now, the idea of well-being is a value-laden concept. What I think of as well-being is probably going to be different than you or the folks in Tanzania. And the issue then is, how do we work together to achieve such ends? And the mining industry, in a nutshell, that's where the issue is. That's where the next step is. It's not the technology of using less water. It's not the technology of being efficient let be much more efficient with energy. We can do that. In fact, we know. Amory Lovins, you gave us the recipe for doing that 30 years ago. It's, now, it is true that new concepts of engineering are desperately needed, but listen, the young kids graduating now, they've got it. 
It's not the young people. The issue is this, how do you take these ideas and work with the people that have been doing what they've been doing for 20, 30, and 40 years? In the mining industry, in the next five years, some of my companies are facing 50% of their labor source resources qualifying for retirement. It's the young, the young people coming in have it. How do you change? In my company, there are 18 chief executive officers that sit around the council. They employ together in the order of 700 to 750,000 people around the world. The trick isn't the technology. The trick is how do you ch introduce change concepts amongst people who have been doing it that way for 10, 20, 30, 40 years? It's a human issue of introducing new ways of doing things. And in the case of the mining industry, it means doing things collaboratively with host communities, bringing them into design processes in a very new and innovative way. So let me stop there, and I've opened up another dimension. Thank you.